Thank you. First, I would like to thank the organizing committee for inviting me to give this presentation. I was giving the topic, I would say. I have no conflicts of interest. Well, surgery and radiotherapy complement each other and is balanced with the risk of the patient. Most studies have tried to balance the effect of combined local regional therapy to yield the same outcome, but more recently, there has been a tendency to reduce the overall burden of local treatment. Local regional treatment in early breast cancer must cover the essential parts, but as little as possible. I have been focusing on data doing less in the axilla, and I have only looked into studies of minimum 50 patients, all clinical note negative. I have tried to uh, separate the, the articles into different strategy towards the axilla. First, table one, addressing leaving the axilla. Clinically node negative patients having no sentinel node biopsy, no axillary lymph node dissection, no regional radiotherapy. There are these non-randomized studies. And the conclusion from all these studies is that in highly selected elderly patients being operated with breast conservation surgery followed by whole breast irradiation and given tamoxifen for PT1 tumors, um, the regional recurrence risk was only 0 to 0 0.27 per year if no axillary lymph node dissection was done. There are two randomized trials in, uh, in this uh, topic, leaving the axilla. There's uh, the uh, International Breast Cancer Study Group Trial 1093, which I would like to uh, highlight here. Almost 500 patients selected on older age, clinical note negative, and having an, in, an indication for tamoxifen irrespective of nodal status. You see the median age was 74 years. The, the more than 50% were T1 tumors being ER positive. And at a median follow-up of 6.6 .6 years, only one and 3% had regional recurrence uh, when we look at the axillary lymph node dissected group versus the no axillary dissected group. Now we go to the sentinel node positive axilla, so clinically node negative, but having a positive sentinel node, no axillary lymph node dissection, and in general, no regional radiotherapy. There are six trials, and four of them uh, are listed here in the non-randomized uh, studies. And I would like to focus on the MIRA study, which is uh, the largest European study nationwide from Holland. 2,680 patients being selected for having a, with having a tumor less than one centimeter of any grade, or T1 to 3 centimeter grade 1, 2. And they were selected on being pathologically node negative or having isolated tumor cells or micrometastases. They were treated in the period 97 to 2005, and one third had pathologically node negative disease and no systemic therapy. One third had sentinel node positive disease and no systemic therapy. And almost 1,000 had sentinel node, posit node positive disease and systemic therapy. Importantly, no completion axillary lymph node dissection was done in a third of the sentinel node positive patients. You see they have quite good characteristics and at five year, the regional recurrence risk for those operated for micrometastatic, uh, with those found with a micrometastatic lymph node in the sentinel node, they had a five year regional recurrence rate of 5.6% if no completion axillary lymph node dissection was done versus only 1% if the dissection was done, giving a hazard ratio of 4.4. There were two other non-randomized studies which I would like to uh, highlight. They have been actually mentioned, one of them uh, the, was mentioned previously today. They are from the Memorial Sloan Caring Cancer Center. In the top panel, you see 326 patients operated with breast conservation. And importantly, 27% of these patients had either no radiation uh, to the breast or were treated with the whole breast irradiation in the prone position, which gives you almost no uh, dose in the lower axilla. And you see, with a median follow-up of 4.6 years, only three, three patients had a regional recurrence. In the lower panel, 
these patients were compared to 210 patients operated with a total mastectomy and where only 5% of the patients had adjuvant radiotherapy. The mastectomized patients were a little younger, had a little larger tumors, but at a median follow-up of 4.8 years, only six patients in this study of 535 patients had a regional recurrence. And there was no difference whether it was a breast-conserving surgery or a, a total mastectomy. So despite many of the patients in these two non-randomized studies had no appreciable radiation dose to the axilla, the regional recurrence risk was very low. So these studies challenge that high tangential whole breast irradiation is needed when not doing a completion axillary lymph node dissection in sentinel node positive patients. There are two randomized studies addressing the sentinel node positive axilla, and I would like to uh, focus on, uh, on the, this study from the International Breast Cancer Study Group, 2301, and I, we just learned previously today that it was published Monday. I'm sorry I hadn't seen that. But uh, I would go directly to the results because it has been mentioned already today. Only 1% had a regional recurrence in the undissected axilla at median 4.8 years. Now we go to the situation where the patient was clinically node negative, not always having a sentinel node biopsy, and she had either axillary lymph node dissection or regional radiotherapy. And now we don't have that much studies. Only two non-randomized studies, and I would like to focus on this study from Holland. Patients were, uh, uh, were um, investigated for having a, a T12 tumor, clinically node negative, and 180 patients had no axillary lymph node dissection but regional nodal radiotherapy. And they were compared to 341 patients having an axillary lymph node dissection. And in case it was node positive, she also had nodal radiotherapy. They were treated in the 90s, and those who were not operated further in the axilla had endocrine uh, uh, treatment. The five-year regional recurrence rate was only 1.1% in the radiotherapy group versus 1.5% in the no radiation group. So very low recurrence risk. We have two randomized trials in this uh, situation. We have a, a study from uh, Institut Curie, uh, treating patients in the 80s, and patients uh, were uh, included in this trial if they had a maximum tumor size of 3 centimeters, clinically node negative, below 70 years old. They all had breast-conserving surgery. 326 had axillary lymph node dissection, and if it was positive, they also had regional nodal radiotherapy. And they were, uh, the other arm were, uh, contained 332 patients, no axillary lymph node dissection, but regional uh, radiation. Only few of the patients had systemic therapy, which you today would judge as inferior. And two-thirds had T1 tumors, the majority were ER positive, and the 15-year isolated regional recurrence rate was only 1% for those who were axillary axillary lymph node dissection, dissected versus 3% in the radiation group. We have also the AMARAS trial, uh, which we are waiting for, um, for results from. It's uh, clinically node negative patients who, um, uh, if they had a, um, a positive sentinel nodes, they were randomized to either uh, axillary lymph node dissection versus regional nodal uh, radiotherapy. We are hopefully uh, seeing data from that study at ASCO later this year. The last table is addressing clinically node negative patients having no axillary lymph node dissection but uh, regional radiotherapy. And I would like to focus uh, on the study from Boston. 130 consecutive patients, sentinel node positive, no completion axillary lymph node dissection. And 51% of these patients had regional nodal radiotherapy, which in three quarter of the cases was a free field technique. They were treated in 1999 to 2007, and the majority had systemic therapy. And you see at a median follow-up of almost five years, zero regional recurrences. Only one randomized trial has been done in this situation. It was published from Milan. 435 patients being more than 45 years of age 
having a clinical node uh, negative uh, breast cancer of maximum 12 millimeters in the clinical judgment, and all had quadrantectomy and whole breast irradiation. They were treated in the 90s, and uh, they all had systemic therapy. And you see at 5.3 years median follow-up, very few regional recurrences. So the conclusion from all these tables is that in general, there are very few regional recurrences in highly selected patients treated with different strategy towards the axilla. In studies with a difference in the regional recurrence risk, this risk was, however, lowest in those who had the completion axillary lymph node dissection. But do we have studies showing us that there are patients who need uh, regional radiotherapy? Well, we have uh, for the post-mastectomy situation and the post lumpectomy situation two large randomized trials. The DBCG82 BNC uh, trial is addressing the post-mastectomy situation. Patients were treated in the 80s, 3,000 patients, and the premenopausal had uh, nine series of CMF, and the postmenopausal had only one year of tamoxifen 30 milligrams. They all had axillary surgery, which was not a complete axillary lymph node dissection. It was more like a sampling with a median of seven nodes removed. They were randomized to plus minus local regional radiation, and it was 50 gray. After a median of 18 years follow-up, you see that those who had not received the uh, radiation, they uh, had 30% local regional recurrence. And if you go to the right in this uh, table, you see that those who had one to three positive lymph nodes in the axilla, they had a 14% uh, isolated actual recurrence rate at 18 years, giving you almost 1% per year. We have from the MA20 uh, study, which is a Canadian randomized study, only published till now uh, as, a, as an abstract at ASCO 2011. Uh, it is uh, addressing post lumpectomy patients being treated in 2000 to 2007, 1800 patients uh, diagnosed with high risk breast cancer. All of the patients had systemic therapy, and you can see here that 85% of the patients had N1 disease. All had axillary lymph node dissection and were randomized to either whole breast irradiation or whole breast irradiation plus regional radiation. With a median follow-up of 62 months, you can see that the hazard ratio is significantly in favor of giving the regional radiotherapy in this study, giving you a significantly lower local regional disease-free survival and significantly lower distant disease-free survival. It is borderline significant when it comes to overall significant, uh, overall survival, sorry. So we have this situation where we have from the one side a, a highly selected, low-risk group where it seems to be very uh, low risk uh, of having a, a regional recurrence in the axilla. And then we have from the other side randomized trials showing you that those patients who are diagnosed with an N1 disease, they need the radiotherapy and have a significant gain from it. Well. We have previously today heard that the systemic therapy is important. And I would like to focus here on uh, randomized studies on pre versus post-operative systemic therapy because they can tell you how much gain you have in the lymph node situation. And looking at the B18, uh, B18 study here, you can see uh, that patients were randomized to surgery followed by four times of AC versus four times AC followed by surgery. And if you look at the uh, effect here you can see in the, in the top panel here, you can see pathological nodal status being negative, that in the whole study group, the likelihood of being pathologically node negative increases from 40% to 59% if you have preoperative four series of AC. If you move to the clinically node negative situation, you can see that you increase the likelihood of being pathologically node negative at surgery from 52% to 67%. And if you uh, look specifically at those diagnosed with a clinically T1 tumor, you also have a significant gain in being more node negative with preoperative chemotherapy. And these results are getting even better if you add docetaxel 4 series also before the surgery. 
the response in the axilla is highly correlated to the primary tumor response. So if you have a pathologically complete response in the breast, only 16% are found with, with nodal disease in the axilla. Whereas if you have stable disease or progressive disease, that risk is um, around 60%. So systemic therapy is effective, but it cannot do the job alone. Local regional therefore need to be optimal. We know there is residual disease in the axilla in patients randomized to uh, doing no or doing the axillary lymph node dissection. From the two uh, top uh, trials listed here, they are from the period where you had no sentinel node biopsy. And you can see from those patients who were randomized to axillary lymph node dissection, 20% of the patients had PN1 disease. You can see from the Z11 trial that those who were randomized to completion axillary lymph node dissection, that in about 40% of the patients, you had two or more lymph nodes being metastatic when you uh, did the surgery. And from the AMARAS trial, we know that those randomized to completion axillary lymph node dissection, that in 63% of the patients, there were macrometastases. And when she was uh, uh, operated further, you found 41% of the patients with further nodal disease. What to do with this residual disease? Well, we have this dose response curve for tumor control of breast cancer in relation to tumor size. And if we anticipate that the residual disease is at the size of one millimeter, we can use this curve to estimate that using 50 gray in 25 fractions gives you around 90% probability that you will cure the tumor. So 50 gray in 25 fractions can, with 90% probability, cure the disease if it is one millimeter in size, meaning that it is, if it is larger than that, the, the probability is smaller for cure with the radiation alone. But then again, the systemic therapy will help you here. Importantly, the adjuvant radiotherapy will only be effective provided there's tumor in the fields. So there we also need to address what are the, what are the optimal targets to be addressed in, in this situation. In the Danish Breast Cancer Cooperative Group, we have just this year published a national consensus atlas on delineation different targets uh, in the adjuvant situation or early breast cancer. Uh, the, ta the target atlas is available on our website. And later this year, we will reach an estro consensus on target delineation in, bre in early breast cancer. Should we skip uh, axillary lymph node dissection and do radiation instead? Well, it's hard to say because radiation also gives you uh, morbidity. We know from Boston investigating 700, 700 patients that patients who had level 1, 2 axillary dissection had a 10-year risk of lymphedema of 11% if they were treated with breast and regional node radiotherapy, compared to only 1% if they had the breast only irradiated. We know from the MA20 study that regional node radiation resulted in more grade 2 or worse pneumonitis and more lymphedema. And lately, we have shown from DBCG that for every 200 women you treat with adjuvant breast radiation, you induce one second cancer. So can nodal radiation replace axillary lymph node dissection? Well, I'm a little bit confused. What are the optimal patient selection criteria to avoid both over and under treatment? And how should we do it? What is the optimal target? Hopefully we will learn more when we see the data from uh, MA20 study being published and from the AMARAS trial. So my answer today is no. Thank you.